My name is Richard, and uh, almost 10 years ago, my doctor said to me, Richard, you have dementia probably of the Alzheimer's type. So I've been living with that diagnosis for about 10 years. I've been living with the symptoms for probably about 12 years. It's very slow moving in me. I'm very fortunate in that. One of the reasons I believe it's slow moving is because uh, I have what's called cognitive reserve. Doesn't mean my brain is bigger than anybody else's brain. It just means I sort of unconsciously grew up in a way that prepared my brain to deal with the confusion that happens when you have this or that form of dementia. Um, if you have a large vocabulary, that helps. If you went to school longer than anybody should, that helps. <laughs> PhD here. Uh, if you're an extrovert, that helps. All those things help your brain to actually cover up the symptoms of dementia. They don't necessarily delay the onset of it. They delay the onset of the symptoms showing to people. Because I believe we unconsciously cover up years before, and even years while we live with it. I was speaking the other day, and, and I was in a hotel where you know, you can walk all the way around the rooms, and I was up on the third or fourth floors. I just make numbers up to make it sound better. Uh, and uh, I came out of my room, and I went, and I saw the elevators, but I didn't see the lobby. So I walked a little bit more, and there were more elevators. And I walked around this thing three times looking for the lobby, because I knew the lobby was with the elevators. And the fourth time I walked around, the people who were waiting for me down on the first floor came up and got off the elevator. And I said, without even thinking, gee, I'm sorry, I was just a little slow getting dressed. <laughs> I covered up for no reason. These were good people, understood what dementia is. It just sort of happens. Your brain just sort of does that. It covers for you until it can't cover anymore. I have a good friend who we, I went to, we went to a party with a week ago, and as we were driving home, the four of us in his car, his wife said, all kinds of people came up to me and said they didn't think you had Alzheimer's because you didn't act the way they did. And he said, well, that's because I tried real hard. <laughs> and so lots of people with dementia can sit next to you in a party or on a bus or in a car and carry on a conversation with you and you not know that they're not following the way they usually follow. Uh, I assume most of you are caregivers. Is that true? No. Okay. Um, well, let me speak to the caregivers first. Um, the reason I go around and talk is I want everybody to see someone with dementia who isn't in the last stages of it. Because that's what you see on TV. That's what you see in the commercials. When I was first diagnosed, I went to my neighborhood Alzheimer's Association and checked out all their videos to look at them. And 10 years ago, they were pretty grim. They were all people in their later stages. They were all um, uh, expensively dressed uh, daughters with their mothers. Uh, and that was what Alzheimer's was seen as. Uh, now, with early stage of Alzheimer's, more and more people are being diagnosed earlier. And in fact, they've carried it to the point now where you can have preclinical Alzheimer's, means you don't have any symptoms, nobody can find any, but they're sure you have it. Um, Alzheimer's has, when, when I was diagnosed, it was generally accepted that 40% of the population 
40% of the people who had dementia had Alzheimer's. Well, that number has been inflated now to the point where they're claiming between 60 and 80% of the people have Alzheimer's. That may be true in terms of diagnoses because that's the easiest thing for doctors to diagnose because there's, nothing, there's no standards to diagnose it by. You have to have a, a memory deficit and one other cognitive deficit. Well, I don't know of any diseases where they say, well, yeah, you definitely have this because you have this and then you can have anything else you want and then that proves that you have this. Uh, but that's where we are. When I was diagnosed, it was a rule out diagnosis. If you didn't walk in with a thyroid that was this big, if you weren't an alcoholic, uh, then maybe you had dementia. But now they purport to be able to tell you if you have dementia and exactly what ty type it is. And too many people, I believe, spend too much time trying to get a diagnosis. Sometimes a year people struggle to try to get a diagnosis. And in the meantime, the real issue in their lives is their symptoms. But you don't move on the symptoms until you get the diagnosis because you want to be sure to be depressed when you uh, start dealing with, uh, with, with dementia. And that's actually what happens, I think. Most people pull into themselves. Uh, I cried for a couple of weeks straight and didn't know why. So did my wife. Anyone I told, their eyes would water up as I was telling them. What is it about dementia, and especially the word Alzheimer's, that brings tears to the eyes of caregivers and uh, people with the diagnosis uh, alike? Well, I believe it's, uh, it's a function of, I don't know how to characterize this, We've been scared into this, I believe. Because the emphasis is on dying with Alzheimer's rather than living with Alzheimer's. And we have to live every day of our lives, whether we want to or not. And the fact that somebody whispers some words into your ear one day doesn't move your day of death one day closer. Uh, the, um, Someone who should know better once said that everybody who has Alzheimer's is going to die. Well, big news, huh? We're all going to die. Now, why do they say that? Well, I think they say it because they're trying to scare us and scare us into donating. Because there is a, a culture that's growing that the way to solve this is to cure it. But they're very careful not to define what cure means. Does it mean your symptoms go away and brain cells that have died are suddenly going to be reborn again? Does it mean that you'll freeze in place and your symptoms won't get any worse but they'll never get any better? Does it mean it's no help to people who are diagnosed but no one else will get it forever and ever? Is it like a vaccine? Nobody knows and nobody speaks about that. They just use the word cure because it's easier to understand that this is a certain walk for a cure than it is walk for everyone who wants to walk for uh, slowing the progression, you take this trail and everybody who wants to walk for a vaccine, you take this trail and leave your checks at the end of the trail. <laughs> um, that doesn't do well playing around, screwing around with our psyches, unfortunately. It builds what I think are false hopes. And that's the business that most Alzheimer's organizations are in, is building false hope. Because their underlying belief is you're dying so we've got to give you some hope. 
Well, the hope is maybe you won't die. 